the most action-packed content from the top mobile experts. This is the App Masters Podcast with Steve P. Young. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is the App Masters Podcast, and I am Steve P. Young, founder of AppMasters.co, where I bring on awesome people in the mobile space to tell their story so that we can learn from their journey and we could use it in our business and hopefully you'll join me on this podcast and I get to interview you and you know if there's one thing that I love to do I love to get down and dirty to the nitty-gritty so that we could figure out exactly all the different strategies that worked and today I am honored I'm excited because he's he woke up early even though he's dead tired he's here with me Matt Hall, he's the founder and director at ClickTalk and Hipster Whale, and you probably know his app. They created the top app, app right now, Crossy Road. Matt, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me on. Yes, I, I am a little tired. <laughs> <laughs> 7 a.m., yeah. Yeah, in Australia, and you said you were just releasing, you just submitted the second version of Crossy Road, right? And that's what you're yeah, sub- submitting today. Yeah, oh, yeah, cool. Just wrapping it up. So I was up really late last night, too. How late, Matt? Um, man, I don't Are you running I can't on, like, remember. Four hours of sleep, three hours it, of sleep. It would be about that. Yeah, I think it was two thirty. I went to sleep. Wow. But. Well, thanks for doing this. I really appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, pain. I, mean, I am in a little bit of pain. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, Let's push through. Push through, Matt. Push through. Let's see. So, I want to kind of start off this conversation. So, for the listener out there, we're going to talk all about marketing. We're going to talk about how you create an awesome game. And talk about all the different questions I got from the community as well. But let's start off the story with the launch of your first game. Mm, the first game at ClickTalk. I mean, I've been making games for a really long time. My very first game, I think I made when I was eight or nine years old. But my first game I launched at ClickTalk was in um, 2009. And it was um, Little Things, which was actually a really big hit on iPad. It was one of the very first. I think it launched like the second week of the iPad uh, iPad's availability. It was a huge hit. But prior to that, I'd release it on PC and I'd worked on that game for a year and it flopped, <laughs> flopped massively. I think, the first, you know, I'd worked a year on it and I made something like $3,000 in its first opening month. That was quite a shock. How much time and money have you had you invested in it? A full year, though, um, you know, that year was very busy because, you know, my wife and I just had a baby. So it was it was quite a lot of time, though. Yeah, it's pretty scary. Definitely more than $3,000 worth of time. <laughs> yeah. Well, why do you think it worked on the iPad and not on the PC? What was the game, by the way? Little Things. Okay. Yeah, so it was a hidden object game. Um I sort of made it for the wrong for the wrong people. I made it for the Big Fish Portal, and I I think I just understood the types of players they had. I knew they had mostly older women on there, so I tried to make a game that would appeal to the older women that I knew. Mm. But of course, the older women on Big Fish games are essentially hardcore hidden object gamers, and any deviation from the formula, <laughs> they do not appreciate. Yeah. But but in making it, in trying to make a game that that anyone could play, I think that was why it was such a great fit for iPad because uh, instead of selling a game to hardcore gamers, the iPad was people discovering how to use touch screens for the first time. So it's an absolutely perfect fit, mm. fortuitous perfect fit. And how long have you been develop making games? I'm 39 now, and I started when I was eight, so wow. a long time. Did yep. you learn how to program back then as well? Yeah. So I had a Commodore 64. Yeah, me too. I love that yeah. thing. So we were fairly we were fairly poor. So I got given one game and a manual. Yep. <laughs> I <laughs> so remember that. Me too, man. <laughs> that game was finished pretty quickly. And then I had nothing to do but learn what to make What was that games. first game? You, I remember mine. Mine yeah. was like this motorcycle that you had to like, you know, jump over these barriers or things. And that was it. Like that was the first game from the manual that I that I built. It was called The Pit. So it's this really obscure arcade game. So I've actually played it in the arcade once when uh-huh. I was very, very little. Yep. But I've never seen it since and never anyone heard of it. It's very rare. Yep. All right. So this is the question that I'm dying to know and somebody in the community. Let me see who, exactly who asked this question. But Marco asked this question, something I had I wanted to ask you as well. It's like, where did you come up with this idea for Crossy Road? Crossy Road. Um, it was a combination of a few things. So um, Andy and I, the, the co-developer, met uh, probably a year before at 
at GCAP, which is a an Australian. It's essentially like Australian GDC mm-hmm. Game Developers Conference, and we were talking all year about something we wanted to make together. And we kept like floating all these ideas, and yeah, that's that's okay. Yeah, that one's that one's all right. And then we want. I wanted to make something that was like Flappy Bird, mm-hmm. as in something that. You would die from the very first moment. You could die from the very first moment <laughs> you play <laughs> and then want to just have a, a high score counter, which went up as you, you know, pretty much each time you tap the screen. And the idea of combining Flappy Bird with Frogger was a shower idea, so to speak. Yep. Mm, yep. I like it. So what's the first step you take after you had this initial idea? I called, um, I called Andy not long afterwards and he said, so how about this Flappy Bird plus Frogger plus some other stuff? And he already had been working on a prototype almost exactly like that. So no way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so from that point on, it was fairly easy. We both sort of knew what we wanted to make. Yep. You know, you're my second guest because I interviewed the guy who created Timberman and he said, yeah, yeah, I wanted to create something that was sort of like Flappy Bird. And then he went about a different angle, obviously, than you did. Yeah. But what, what sort it's, of... It's, so it's complicated because so many people look at the success of Flappy Bird and they right. say, that's amazing. I'm going to make Flappy Bird again. Whereas it's, you know, it's games like Timberman and Dexterous and Crossy Road where it's it's taking the core feeling and then making something new are the ones that have done well. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. And that's what I want. That's why I'm excited to talk to you. And I was excited back then to talk to him because it is trying to figure out like what you guys think those core features are. Because I think a lot of people have tried to clone it, right? Like they, they would make the same exact version. But when you put mm. a different unique spin on like Timberman did and like Crossy Road did, what is that core feature that you felt that you're you're like, okay, this is what Flappy Bird does really well, but I'm going to put my spin on it now? Well, there's no one thing. I mean, you just have to spend time thinking about it. Like well, I said, that took it took – it took probably three months of <laughs> me sitting there going, I want to make something a bit like Flappy Bird before I came up with the answer. Yeah. What were you thinking when you said a bit like Flappy Bird? What are those things? I guess you mentioned one of them was like. Exactly what I said before. Die yeah, early. It's got to, yeah, die, die early. Something that's ridiculous enough that people will share with their friends, <laughs> you know, high score feature. Just the just the basic core tenets. It's different for every game. but. And I think what I really like about your game is that, I don't know if this is part of, like, when you think about game design, this is something that has to go into it, is that there's a a variable, right? Like, there's variety inside, whereas Flappy Bird, like, things the... Mm, Had none. Right. Yeah, there wasn't too much variety. And even Timberman didn't have too much variety. Just had to go left and right, left and right. But here, it's like, you have water, right? You have... The, the streets, you have trains that are coming a little bit faster. You have cars that are a little bit slower. You have this variety in there that makes it feel, I don't know, like I guess for me it was more engaging. Like I could continually play this, whereas Timberman and Flappy Bird's like, okay, great, oh, let's see how high I can get. But then I don't know if there's yeah. you know, like longevity towards those type of games. The, well, the longevity sort of comes from a couple of places. It's not only from, as you say, the procedurally generated world, which you never – quite know what's going to happen next like you actually have to react to it flappy bird sort of has that where the the little holes go up and down right it does have that. <laughs> but it's it's just like a really really small part of that but the the other thing with the variety is that maybe people are, get bored of the game but then they're interested in what crazy creature they're going to collect next and what's it going to do yep Right. So we tried to tackle it from a few different fronts. Yeah. What What other fronts are you kind of thinking about? Well, that, that, that is what, like variety, tackling mm-hmm. it from a couple of different ways. Got like it. That. I like it. And the, how, actually, the other thing I want to talk to, about, talk to you about is how long did it take you from when you guys initially had the idea mm-hmm. to actually, you know, feeling like you, it was something that you could submit to the app store and what were, what was that sort of journey look like? What did that journey look like? It was 12 weeks, so pretty quick. Wow. We, we were going to do it in six, and then once we got to that midpoint, we went, you know what, this is shaping up to be pretty good. We're going to take the extra time to make it really good. Yep. And was the 3D thing one of the different different graphic elements? Like, we ought to change it. Like, they, they have, like, pixel art, but we're going to go 3D, and we're going to make it, like, futuristic type of looking. That was always in my mind. I think we did that in – I did that the first week. <laughs> that was very <laughs> early on. Yeah. Nice. The camp. That camera angle, yeah, our very first, our very first 
game, you know, a demo version made just a couple of days afterwards has exactly that same camera angle that remained throughout development. Yeah, I remember Timberman saying that he showed it to a bunch of his friends and, you know, they went through a couple of different iterations before finally deciding like, okay, this is it. And he went to like game conferences to show it off to the other people. Did you guys do anything like that as well when you're kind of developing it? No. So we wanted to we wanted to spend as little time on it as possible. <laughs> Why is that? Just because it's dangerous on the app store. You never know whether something's going to succeed or fail. If you a year on each game, you can find yourself in a lot of trouble financially. Yeah, I like it. I like that approach. <laughs> it sounds so easy. Like, hey, we took 12 weeks. We get in the app store. We're hit number one. <laughs> we're making tons of money. And here's Crossy Road. <laughs> Yeah, with with development, it's momentum's really important. I guess that's a personal thing. Momentum's really important for me because if I get lost on a game, I might slow down and then stop, and then starting back up again is a, is near impossibility. Yeah. How do you keep that momentum going? <sighs> Caffeine. <laughs> <laughs> and staying up till two to three a.m. just to make sure it gets done. Just working on the game every day during that period. Yeah. And do and, you and, and feeling- Andy? Live close to each other? Are you guys constantly talking? No, uh, we're constantly talking through Skype. We actually live an hour and a half away from one another, and we didn't catch it. We didn't meet up the entire duration of the, wow. making the game. Yeah, it was entirely remotely. Yeah. Okay, I got a question from Johan. He says, "Which software do did you guys use to make the three D meshes?" Yeah, so I found it's called Cubicle. So it's Q U B I C L E. Okay, it's Q-U- by a company called Mind Desk. And um, I discovered it a while ago now. I think it was two years ago because I was looking for a a 3D tool I could use to create 3D art by myself so I could mock up things very quickly and start creating 3D games without having to learn the ins and outs of a package like 3D Studio Max or Maya or Modo. Mm -hmm. And um, not long after that, we did a game jam and my, I wanted to make a game in this style, but and my friend who's working on another game with mine called Dick War, I said, do you want to have a go at this? <laughs> try, try this 3D package. And the stuff he produced was like way better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> and he's, he's run with the tool. He's been using it ever since and was drawing all these funny voxel 3D animals on his um, Twitter. I was like, you know what? I'd really like to make a game that features those. Yeah. Nice. I like that. Matt, so I also want to talk about, let's see. I mean, there's so many directions. I want to ask you everything. I know it's early. <laughs> All right. So what's in terms of monetization, what's really working well for you guys? Um, so the game wasn't actually designed um, to be monetization first. The, the entire point of the game was actually to be to have really high retention so that people keep coming back and really high virality so that people want to tell their friends about it. And monetization, of course, we put thought into it, but it was secondary, yeah. It was more important that the game made it to number one, so to speak, yeah, mm. and all our efforts were based on that. If You, you, you know, it, if it doesn't matter how well you monetize a game, if no one's playing it, you are in trouble, <laughs> right. So you you gotta have a long it seems to me, if I'm kinda hearing you correctly, like you had this long term view, like, hey, we're gonna spend a little time on it. If it takes off, we're gonna focus on vir- virality and then keeping retention. And mm. we're not gonna spend too much time on it because frankly we wanna get it out in the app store and see if it's actually gonna stick all our yep. and then if it does stick, then we know that, hey, we've thought about the two things and if those two things hit, then we can think about monetization because people will continue to play on play it. We can tweak monetization is a better way to put it. Right, like okay. obviously I've put some thought into it, but whether right. it worked or it didn't, it doesn't matter so too much because as long as your game's popular, you can – You'll figure you can, it out. You can improve things. That's right. Yeah. Great. What's monetizing the best for you right now? Um, I can't talk about percentages or anything like that, but we definitely make more from ads than we do from in-app purchases. So our game is really um, light on the wallet doesn't have $99 in-app transactions and it doesn't have major consu- it doesn't have consumables in it at all like all the purchases are permanent so mm-hmm. if you buy something you can just hit that restore purchases button and it'll come back yep and there's this there's this business insider article and I'm sure you saw it but it said yeah <laughs> that you I made a million dollars so far yeah. from the ads from the clever video ads 
Yeah, from year to year, ads, yeah. So is this the, you get virtual currency for watching a couple of video ads? Is that what this is? That's right, yeah. You get your 20 coins every time you watch an ad. Yep. Yeah. I know Fun Run does this exceptionally well because I watch so many stinking ads for this game and it's just like, yeah, I want some coins and so I'm willing to watch 30 seconds of an ad. That's like no problem for me. seems like that's yeah, the best generally motivation. It's, yeah, generally it's 15 seconds as well. Right, exactly. It's good because, it's good because like with ours, they, you don't have to see a single ad if you don't want to. Like lots of people don't like ads right. and I totally respect that. And you can see we haven't put in interstitials or banners yep. for that reason. But yeah, there's ads there to watch if you want to. And yes, people are watching them. So when you're thinking about retention, actually, you know what? You're using Unity, Unity video ads. I didn't yeah. know that they had that. Did you guys build this on top of Unity as well? That's right. Yeah. Okay. No, Unity ads is a, well, they were called Amplifier. You may have heard them. And uh-huh. then they were, I think they became every play ads and now they're just Unity ads. I think that's the, <laughs> they've had a few name changes. Okay. But yeah, it's the same team. They've been around for a little while. Yep. Oh, I didn't know that. So it's, just, it's the same platform, right? Like it's a Unity platform to build the games and then they have the ads already integrated with it. There's the Unity asset store. So it's just on there, but it was, you know, it's, it worked, it worked really well. Yeah. Okay, cool. Very easy to integrate. The... The thing I want to talk to you about is when you're thinking about retention, when you're thinking about virality, what are some of the things that really worked well for you in terms of those two aspects? Um, the, the, with retention, you need to give people a reason to come back to the game later. So in our case, you know, the characters and the free gifts, that's that's what it is. So um, every, every time you come back, you're going to get somewhere between 50 and 500 coins or if you end up buying the piggy bank, it's between 100 and 1,000 coins, roughly. And so every six hours, you're going to be able to get, you know, one, prob- probably one to ten creatures. Depends on how how through the game you are. At the end, it's much harder to unlock those final characters. Um, and the fact that, the like, once you start seeing the characters and you realise, wow, these are actually really interesting, they're not just simple skins and playing with one could be much harder or could be really funny Then people want to see what's next. Yep. Are they, are there like different difficulty in the different characters? That none of them are easier than any of the others, but there are some that are definitely harder. Yep. I found Just the, through the, virtue of the, yeah, the, whether it's dark and it's nighttime or et cetera. Yep. The vampire, like we had the vampire yeah, one. He's really, <laughs> he's really difficult. He's still stinking yeah. long. I feel like he lose, moves slower. Maybe it's just my mind playing no, no, my no trick one, on me. Everyone moves the same speed. It's the same <laughs> yeah, see, yeah. It is the size. I yeah. love that. See, I love the brilliant, <laughs> I love the, the variety of things that you guys put onto it. And I used to think to myself, like when I was playing it, that, man, you're just giving me all these gifts about these characters. Yeah. Like I get to unlock them all the time. That's right. Did you tell anyone about the game? I did. Apart from right now, of course. <laughs> of course, yeah. yes. <laughs> yes, I, sh- I, think, I think I did share the Twitter and I, I was yeah. like, wow, this is great. But, you know, I think so I found why out. Did you, why yeah. did you do that? Why did you share Crossy Road and not, an, not another game? I think it was because I love the game design. And I think what I actually shared was the top score. Like I was like, finally, yeah. like I beat my son's top score. He had, yeah. he had me beat for so long. And I said, finally, I beat him. And so that's, that's, that's why I shared it. Yeah, so there are a lot of different ways to share. Like people aren't going to share some. They're not going to share something they're not enjoying because they don't want to tear down. <laughs> they don't want to ruin their friend's day. So it's important. Like all that goodwill with all those characters we're giving away creates a situation where people say, "Man, you've got to check this out." As well as there's also the crazy characters. Like people might really feel like sharing. Wow, have you seen Doge? This is crazy. Mm. This dog and this text all over the screen. I don't understand what's going on. And then of course the high score. This. You know, there's a few different ways to get people to press that tweet button. <laughs> <laughs> what are yeah. some other ways? Um, that That's the other three ways, yes. I mean, there's more too. Like people just might um, – some, some people um, – what's a good way of putting it? Like being the one that discovers things first. Mm-hmm. And so I found this really cool game. Uh, and I'm the first one to discover it, and that and, and that's sort of a, a nice, fun feeling when you you're the one who introduced the game to your entire network of friends. Yep. yep. But there's lots of reasons why people share. Yep. 
I think that's a brilliant move. I think, you know, there's this great book about influence and he talks a lot about reciprocity. And I think you guys giving so much gifts and to the point where I started feeling like, wow, there's a lot of gifts being given, like given and sort of builds that rep- so that we as a user would are more, well, more willing to share the app itself as well. I think it's a great strategy. Yeah. The So let's talk about marketing. So, I mean, you guys have done phenomenally well, top charts, everything. What what has really worked? What was sort of your strategy from an over, let's talk it from a, like a high level view. Like what was sort of the strategy with getting the app, the word out there? Oh, I mean, we we sort of already talked about that. So the app is the app is one hundred percent organic. So we don't actually pay for ads. Like we don't, although we have ads in our game, we don't advertise ours. Mm-hmm. Apple, Apple, of course, gave us a really great feature, and that the, the first step is trying to make a game that Apple feel comfortable sharing. <laughs> you want to make something Apple-y. <laughs> and that that's a fairly nebulous thing to say, but it's actually a pretty good mantra. Like why why do Apple share the apps that they do? Yep. Did why you, are they promoting this one over the thousands of others that came out that week? Yeah. Did you do any type of outreach to get them to be aware of the app? So yeah, so Crossy Road is actually my fourth number one game. So Apple know who I am at this mm. point. So mm. once we had once they have the game ready, I'm able to to reach out to them. But then initially when I did my first ever game I didn't know anyone. I didn't know anyone at Apple, of course. Yeah, and Little Things was the first one they they reached out to me with because it was a game, you know, well designed for the platform. You know, it was early to iPad. It used the touch screen well. If you do those things, if you make a game that makes the Apple device look and feel good, they're probably going to feature you because they have. They have teams of people, like all the reviewers, I believe, I think they recommend up the chain. Like mm. the, each week there's generally two-thirds, uh, one-third of the games on the App Store have never, the, the people have never released an app before. And the only way they can do that is if Apple is spending a large amount of time on curation and identifying those cool games. Yep. Right. It seems to be like the, the feature page is the one that's curated and the sub, the, the category pages are more like automatic. Auto, yeah, automatic that's type right. of stuff. Yeah, yeah, I love that. And so I guess it is about that. I mean, sort of Tim Brown said that like, hey, look, we just built the game. And then it was for him, it was like three months down the road, which was an mm. interesting story because it was his first hit app that got featured. Like, kind of like when little things for you. And so now is it just more like you just email somebody from Apple and say, hey, I'm working on this game. Here's sort of like the first version. Is that what you kind of did with it? Well, there are, there are absolutely no guarantees. It's just like, Hey, I'm, you know, I've made stuff before. Here's my next thing. Yep. Is it a, somebody that manages the app store? And then pray. (laughs) (laughs) Right. (laughs) There's people all over the place. So each territory has their, has, has, um, reps assigned for this Uh duty. Yep. And do you just have their email address and it's like, Hey, I'm submitting it. When do you make that contact, the email? You make it as soon as you have something good to show because you want to start that process not early, early, early. You want to make sure it's good, but early enough. Yeah. But before you, it actually hits the app store, is that what you Of recommend? course, yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. Otherwise, you're not going to get a launch <laughs> if they don't know about it. Yeah. <laughs> I know. You guys got featured right when it got released, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. That's fantastic. All right, cool. Let's see. Let me just go sift through these. So what? what how would you come up with the name? Crossy Road. Yeah. Yeah, it was originally called like Roadkill or Roadkill Simulator or something. That was my that was my first draft title, which wasn't good at all. <laughs> so we just sat there one day and just came out with some. And of course, Crossy Road is an alliteration of Flappy Bird and Angry Birds and all those apps. Once once I said it, we just we just started laughing because of the ridiculousness of it. I don't know how many people got the joke, but um. I thought it was more because, like, yeah. the chicken character. I mean, did you guys have the name and then thought about, you know, like, if the chicken crossed the road? That's what I thought. Like, you guys. Well, obviously, there's the, the, you know, the chicken was the lead character based on the that popular joke. Right. But we knew they were crossing the road. But, yeah, the I, to invent a word to try and fit that flappy, angry paradigm, uh, I, we thought that was really funny. Yeah. Got it. I love that. I love that. Anything else you want to cover, Matt? 
I think, I, I mean, there's a lot of stuff and I don't want the listener. The thing about me is like, I don't want the listener thinking like, oh, I wish you, Steve, you should have asked about this. It's but, definitely too early for me to come up with a question to ask myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you drive. Yeah. I love it. That's great. So I'm sure you guys, did you guys do any type of outreach as well in terms of, you got featured by Apple. That was great. Mm-hmm. But did you do anything else in terms of like reaching out to like sites like iMore, these other app review sites? Yeah. It's going to sound a bit mean to say this, but press is less important these days. Yeah. I definitely, like, I like, I like press because I like reading it. So I'm always interested in, you know, I probably spend more time reading about games than I do playing them, whether it's, you know, old print magazines or, or on the web. I just find that really exciting. So I have people who I reached out to, yeah, like Touch Arcade and Game Zebo and, and, uh, pocket gamer lots of others but with crossy road it's the first time where people have come to me mm. like it's people are what up you know the press identified it really early as something that was not normal <laughs> and so, of course with press you need a story that of something out of the unusual yep so, so you didn't do any out, really outreach well. we did but not okay. not as much as you'd think yep. okay Cool. Well, that's great. The, the the other thing I want to hit on is for the, the listener out there who's sort of like me, who is fascinated by games, like I told you before, and but you really don't have a clear understanding of how to make a really compelling game. What would you say to that person? How to make a compelling game? Wow. I think you just have to, for a start, like I see a lot of people trying to make games that that play them, but don't try to dissect them. Like why why does this game work? Even the games that people that you think are crap. Like why does people play like a lot of people really don't like Candy Crush Saga, for example. But a lot of people do. So you should sort of sit down and say, Why do people like this? Yeah. Why what's compelling about it? And there's a thousand things. Right. Yeah. Like whether it's the way the little bits move or how long do I have to spend in each session? Is the art is the art appealing at all? There's so there's so many factors. Yeah, and the longer you spend making games, the more you'll understand those factors. It helps to play some really bad games too, <laughs> and you can see what is this game doing wrong that this one is doing right. Right. Yeah. yeah why did a lot you of, stop playing? There this are game? a lot of terrible games out there, particularly on the App Store. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. It's gr- lots of great reference material. <laughs> Do you? I mean, can you almost look at a game now if a if a developer came up to you and said, Hey, check out my game. Would you almost be instantly be able to say like, here's what's wrong with it. Here's, here's what I would change. Here's how I would do yeah. things. There's a large element of instinct there. So the, I have an interesting story there. Yeah. So when I first started on the app store, it was, it was very early. And there, there was, a, I mean, there's a lot of games out. It's probably within the first six months to a year. And there was stories of people having pretty big successes on there. And so I wanted to know who was being featured and who wasn't because obviously being featured is if you get featured by Apple, you're going to win (laughs) generally. (laughs) So I wanted to see if there's any, any method to it. So what I did is I went out and grabbed an iPod touch at the time. And then I went onto this website called app shopper. App shopper just runs a completely clear channel. Like if a game comes out on the, app store they'll scrape it and put it up on app shopper so what i would do is i spent a month like each for four weeks i would go through and i just look at every single game every game that hit the app store and i'd and i'd eventually say oh this one looks kind of interesting and then i'd click on it and then look at the screenshots and i went oh yeah this one maybe this one looks kind of cool and then i'd play it for a little bit download it and play it and I go, yes, I, I enjoyed that game or no, I didn't. And I was able to pick the winners probably seven times out of 10, you know, the people who were being featured that week, mm. which proved that Apple were doing a good job of curation. And then through that process, I realized, okay, first I'm looking at the icon, then I'm looking at the screenshots, then I'm reading the description and then I'm playing the game. And that's how people approach your game. Like it doesn't matter if you've got the best game ever, if your screenshots icon and description aren't good no one's going to download it off the off uh, on a whim yep and apple certainly aren't yep oh i love that so you 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 didn't even look at the app store you kind of looked at app shopper yeah i figured out which ones you want to download for the month yep and then you would go back into the app store and see which ones got featured out of the ones you played yeah nice and uh, it was very accurate 
I love that, Matt. That's a great strategy. You know it's what? Good I- for, it's good to learn, like, because people look at the great games on the App Store and they don't look at the turkeys. And looking at the turkeys is a great way of understanding, am I doing this? Maybe I should hire an artist because every game on here that has, a, <laughs> that has programmer art has tanked. Yes. Yes. Or a bad <laughs> icon. Bad icons are the, are the worst one. Yeah. And a lot of people, you know, they might be great programmers and, and bad artists and you'll never get anywhere. You might be willing to program, but you'll never actually make a hit unless you understand art. Yep. Yeah. I love Apple that. Apple are very design art focused. Yeah. yeah, I love that. Matt, this has been absolutely amazing, my friend. But let's go to the big finish. What is your favorite mobile app? Wow. Out of the 200 million <laughs> that are out there, probably the one that made the biggest impact for me where I was like, wow, that is, that is really something, was Tiny Wings. Like when I first downloaded that (laughs) it's like man i gotta up my game why especially because it was made by one guy and he did all the art and all the music and the the, i mean the game was sort of uh was was based on this game called waveform but it was absolutely perfectly executed and then it made it even before it was Apple even started their feature run, it jumped straight to the top of the charts. Like the word of mouth on that game was absolutely astonishing. Yeah. It seems game. like two word two word games. You gotta have a two word game. Crossy Road, Tiny Wings. Tiny wings. <laughs> two <laughs> yeah. syllables, one syllable. First syllable ends in Y. Yep. <laughs> That's Angry the way to go. Birds. Yeah. You're right. You're right. Yeah. I love that. All right. Yeah. Just for fun, give us a half-baked idea for an app, something you wouldn't mind someone else working on. Yeah, I I have this saying that sort of like ideas are nothing and execution is everything. So if I said to you, you know, Frogger plus Flappy Bird, you'd probably laugh, you'd laugh me out of the office. <laughs> <laughs> um, the idea, of course an idea is important. And as I said, we didn't start on that until the idea was good, but if you can't make that idea as good as it can be, it really doesn't matter how good the idea is. I do have this idea for one thing I've been working on for a while. Well, not working on It's just been in my mind forever, which is a game where you have to proofread text. <laughs> so it's like a you, you play the spell checker. Uh-huh. Yeah. So all this text flies past and you have to spot the spelling mistakes as quickly as you can. Oh, I know my wife would love that game because she mm. spot checks a bunch of my stuff. Like, you misspelled this. And I was like... Why do you care? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I like that. Yeah. I, I know you kind of touched on this, but I'll ask it anyways, just in case something else comes out of this. But what advice would you give anyone looking to build a mobile app? Uh, advice for making... Um, it, it, like I said, we've talked that about that a little bit during this interview, but making sure you understand not only the good games, but the bad games as well, yeah, or the bad apps as well. Like mm-hmm. what, what has that app done wrong and make sure that you don't repeat that mistake? Well, too many people just look at the good stuff. Yeah. Love it. And if the audience wants to learn more about you and your products and say thank you for coming on, where would they go? Uh, crossyroad.com is probably the best, <laughs> <laughs> the best kickoff point, yeah. From there you can get to our Twitters. So there's Andy... Um, me and then Ben is our artist. So if you jo- if you follow us all on Twitter, then you can, you know, learn a bit more about us. Yeah. And that's the Twitter's cro- at Crossy Road, right? Uh, no. So you'll get to if you go to CrossyRoad dot com, you'll see the Twitter of Andy, me, oh, and cool. Ben on there. Yep. Nice. All, all the relevant links to go to CrossyRoad dot com. Nice. And see if you can beat my top score of seventy something that I got. <laughs> but Matt, what was your top score? You told me before we hit record. Three three hundred and sixty something, yeah. And then what's the top score yeah. of the, the 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 top top the top top, score? top top? Is it like a thousand something? That is yeah. ridiculous. Early thousands, yeah. <laughs> I think a friend asked me, he's like Takes about five minutes. Yeah. Five, five minutes? That's minutes. it? Yeah. For yeah. a thousand? I would think it's so much more. <laughs> no. It gets it slowly ramps up, so once you start getting to that 300 point mark, it starts getting a little bit difficult. <laughs> There's videos out there as well. So have a look at some of those top scoring people and prepare to be scared. How does that make you feel, man? Like when there's actually video YouTube videos created based on a game that you created? A bit odd. We're having a bit of a hard time coming to terms with it a little bit. 
Well, let me end with it's this. It's 20, 20 million downloads so far. 20 million. Congrats, man. That's great. And I know you just came out with the Android version on the day of the recording. It was yeah. maybe a week ago or a couple of weeks ago that I saw that press that's, go. That's got 3 million downloads now. So it's probably, it's well in excess of 20. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. 3 million there and then I think 19, 18, 19, 20 million on the iOS side. Have yeah. you done anything to celebrate? No. <laughs> You're still hustling. Been too busy. Yep. <laughs> I love it. Well, Matt, yeah. come back anytime. Anytime you got another game coming up, I would love to pick your brain brain on some more because there's some valuable content that you've already imparted. So thank you so much. And if you got anything out of this, you, the audience member, you, Gary, you, Romeo, if you got anything out of this, find a way to thank the guests like I'm about to do. Like I'm up, I'm about to do now, Matt. Thank you so much for waking up early for yeah. being <laughs> for, for waking up early. Me. Sorry, I nodded off there for a moment. What did you say? <laughs> yeah. Love it. Thank you all for listening. We'll see you at the next chat. Thanks for listening to the App Masters Podcast. For show notes and amazing app marketing content, check out appmasters.co.